James B. Madonna, and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, it just happens to be June the 28th, 2014, Saturday afternoon, June the 28th, 2014. Saturday in the park, every day's the 4th of July. And you know why I'm singing it? Because this happens to be the United States Independence Day week. July 4th is this coming Friday, I believe. Am I correct? Uh, I one, believe. two, three, four, yep. Yeah, this, uh, this Friday is the uh, America's Independence Day, July 4th, and my mother's birthday. Like she used to joke around a lot. She says uh, the doctor t uh, told her, her mother that your daughter is born with a bang. Ha 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 ha. Ah. July 4th, double celebration, um, so that means the uh, United States of America is a Cancerian, Cancer the Crab. I think the United States of America has a cancer, it's called the corporations and the plutocrats. That's, that's a good one, uh -huh. that's a good one man. Those are the levity bells, by the way. Last Saturday, we did not ring them once because there was nothing funny said last week. <laughs> anyway, welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I am here at the Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. And um, I would... Uh, before I begin with the formalities, I would like to say hello and give greetings to uh, my uh, close and near dear friend from Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And also, I want to greet uh, uh, one of the pre premier uh, alternative fitness uh, trainers in Southern California, uh, Mr. Rick Brown. Rick Brown of uh, steel, stone, and sugar. Mm. They are now uh, doing uh, their May swinging workshops nationwide. Very happy for them. They're getting uh, uh, very popular now, well booked, getting more busy by the month, which is great, Rick Brown. And, um, and I wanna say also hello to uh, a friend, uh, a one of the premier, uh, I like the word premier, one of the premier uh, members of my Facebook groups, particularly the group connected to the show, uh, Mr. Martin Bulldog Drummond, and also to my friend who is one of the premier personal trainers of the stars in New Jersey, in northern New Jersey, uh, Mr. Mario Petrus. I would like to greet him and all of them blessed with my lucky Blackthorn Shillelagh from Ireland and uh, I wanna I'm gonna um, right now pipe aboard pipe aboard with my authentic bosun's whistle my illustrious longtime co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977 with the bosun's whistle. Arr, arr. Welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship newsletter censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Engage. Make it so. Oh, you, oh, you got engaged? No, I engaged the, uh, the warp drive. Oh, the warp drive you yes, engaged? Yes, engage. Huh? Make it so. Oh, make, oh, you and that Picard, make it so. Make it so. What is he, a seamstress? Ah. Make it so. Get it? So? Ah, I, I was a little corny. It certainly was. Uh, you know, 
have to rub it in. Anyway, yes, I colored my hair. I got tired of everybody busting my balls about uh -huh, the uh, salt uh -huh. and pepper, about the gray hair, and I uh, I did it with uh, female hair coloring because the Just For Men does not stay in my hair. It washes out and fades. Ooh. Okay. I've been trying to sink that into Billy Morrow's head that uh, there's nothing wrong with the box if there's a girl's picture on the front. It just means it's stronger hair color. Okay. I don't want to hear no complaints now that I colored it. Even though some women do like salt and pepper, they do like the uh, older man look. But it seems like today you gotta you have to be a sleaze bag to oh, to yeah. to be popular in in this uh, modern uh, uh, selfish, evil, wicked, greedy society. The more sleazy oh, you are, the more sleazy you are, the more uh, attention you get, the more popular you oh, become. Yeah. It's like that stupid psychological uh, observation uh, or, or uh, syndrome or whatever you call it, the bad boy image, the bad boy image. Hey, 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 this is plenty of bad boys. There's more, there's more. They're shooting up kids in schools all over the place. Mental illness running rampant in this country. You know, I heard there's a, there's a lot of mentally ill people in regular prisons that should really be in mental hospitals. Oh, bingo. No, no kidding. But I think they need the, the free slave labor for oh. the corporations. The United the, States has the most people in prison of all countries in the world. Incarceration has been up, I think, 700%. 700-fold. It used to be like in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, until the mid-70s, we used to put 100 people in jail per 100,000. Now it's 700. Well, now you have, you have uh, all these privatized prisons being built, new ones. And guess what this all means? Uh, I'll give you one guess if you have half a brain tied behind your back. Uh, it is cheaper than outsourcing for these corporations. It's cheaper to let, allow you to go broke, poor, homeless, whatever, or if you smoke a joint, whatever, any any uh, frivolous, feeble excuse to arrest you so you can provide the corporation with free labor. Uh-huh. All right. And guess what? What? Um, uh, it flew out of my head. It'll come back. Is but, it a, hopefully uh, it's a homing pigeon and no, fly it's back. about the, the, the it's about the prison system. About the privatized prison systems. Well, what they did was instead of granting welfare, food stamps, etc. Back in the seventies, they decided that they were going to make laws against possession, against small drug things, all kinds of laws to put these kind of people in jail where they can be controlled and where they can be free labor, etc., etc. This was a political decision that was made back then. Okay? And that's why we have so many people in jail. But, here, here, it came back to my head. But, after these people pay their debt to society uh -huh. and are released from prison, Right. Guess what? What? They can't vote. Well, why can't they vote if they paid their debt to society? Correct. You're right. I agree with you. Why can't they vote? Because they want to ostracize them and keep them from the political system. Because they know, maybe they know, that an inmate who gets out of prison will most likely vote Democrat. And, wow. the, and the corporatists oh, don't course. want that. Of course. You know, we, we were talking uh, Wednesday about uh, <clears throat> voter suppression and cage voting and, uh, and not having lavatories so people end up going home and not voting and blah, blah, blah. And, and no transportation for the poor in the urban areas to get mm -hmm. to the polls. And uh, 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 
all kinds of voter fraud and what's the uh, what's the other thing that, that can go wrong I guess I covered it right most of it yeah most of it but it's all it's all calculated to stop uh, people voting Democratic that's what it's all about the lead the, the less people go to the polls the more Republicans are able to win the election because they know because their numbers you know they used to they say, know that the po folk outnumber the elitists so naturally the well, Democrat boy. naturally the Democrats will get the popular vote hands down but why do you think the corporations and the plutocrats took over the country to prevent real democracy from showing its ugly head. You mean the, the, the oligarch that we have now? Yeah, because if that weren't so, then the democracy, when the people vote, they yeah. would be voting for we the people. That's right. Correct? Instead of cokies with we the corporation. Oh, the and like I said last night on on uh, Facebook and uh, uh, et cetera all the time, when these people complain about the corporations doing this, that, and the other thing, we have a way of stopping them. Boycott. No! Revoking their charters! Every corporation that in Delaware, New Jersey, or New York, wherever it comes about, it is supposed to be doing stuff in the public interest. If it is not, its charter can be revoked. We used to do that in the old days. We don't dare do it anymore. They're too powerful. But it is a legal maneuver. I was reading it. somewhere uh, where there was a banner where it, it showed that uh, G.W. Bush um, uh, completed many more executive orders than Barack Obama, but that was fine. But when Barack Obama pulls executive orders, it's abuse of power. Yeah, that's correct. Because anything Barack does, Barack anything Obama does. Anything that black man in the White House does uh, is an abuse of power. They, they just, the racist uh, right wing just do not want the black man yeah, in the White correct. House. Now, Republican, the Republican Congress, from what I understand. The House. The House. The House deregulated uh, and gave more, is giving more tax money than ever before to the Koch brothers. Mm -hmm. So the Koch brothers seem to be the head honchos when it comes to American politics on a federal level. They're giving them more of your tax money and deregulating these two demons, mega demons or high ranking demons even more than before. Yeah, and they're ready to spend three hundred million dollars in the next election. There you go. To get their way. Yeah. Well, corporate welfare is at uh, like ninety-three billion a year. Subsidies, corporate welfare, and maybe that's a conservative figure. It's a conservative figure, believe me. And let me because take you're a not putting in the private contractors from the Pentagon. Well, let me take a while. Remember, the Pentagon lost. It cannot account for. Well over two point seven trillion dollars. Really? Yeah. Well, let me take a wild guess and and say that um, the uh, um, the tax money that's going into the hands of the rich are coming from the burdened middle class. Yeah. And the poor. What, the poor don't pay taxes just because they don't pay income taxes? Because they don't earn enough? No, consumption. They pay all other taxes. They just don't have the money to pay income taxes. Income taxes. Yeah. There are many, many, every time he fills up his, uh, his, 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 his car to go to his cheap job for $7.25 an hour. Yeah. He's paying taxes. Okay. You shouldn't pay any taxes and with a minimum raise, wage. Huh? They want to raise the gas taxes, I think, 12 cents. Okay. Oh, yeah, I hear, the, I hear Big Oil wants to really jack up gas oh, prices. Oh, isn't it funny how the price of gas has gone up for July the 4th? Isn't it funny? Any? It went up for, uh, uh, what was that, the uh, last Memorial, uh, Memorial Day weekend? Day, yeah. And then Labor Day weekend, it goes yeah, up. Yeah, isn't it funny? They, they're capitalizing, uh, taking advantage 
of the peak seasons like the airlines do. Don't the airlines do that too? Of course. Like Christmas and Thanksgiving, they jack up yeah. the, the rates quite high. And then when high. winter comes, they'll jack up the oil prices for heating oil. That's capitalism for you. Hey! Hey! You know. It's not, it's not an honest way of life, that's for sure. It's why do you, why do you think I always say ill-gotten gains? Well, I believe that conservative corruption uh, and greed created poverty in the United States. Back in Thomas Jefferson's day, there was no poverty in America. There were no paupers. Zero. None. Nada. Well, you had no social services, though. Because everybody owned their own land. You didn't need social services. They all, they all raised their own. You didn't need a permit or, or, or to have chickens, livestock, uh, vegetables, fruit, you know. Your truck garden. You, yeah, you, you, you didn't get arrested. And you bartered with your neighbor. Right. You didn't get asparagus. You didn't get arrested for having uh, uh, herbs and uh, for having produce growing in your front Don't yard. Know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now now you get fined and he very heavily if you have a garden in your front yard. You're supposed to have useless grass that you have to mow. Mow Larry and Curly. They have to cut once a week. That does nothing for mm -hmm. you. No, you can't. You can't be practical and have your house, your so-called American dream of owning a home, mm -hmm. and set, deciding, eh, why why am I wasting my time cutting grass? I think I'm going to plant some basil, some parsley, some uh, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, whatever. Mm. You know, cucumbers. No, you can't do that. Nope. You can do it in the back, but not in the front. Nope. Totally corrupt. We live in an artificial world. And take it uh, just for like uh, breast, breastfeeding. Breastfeeding. We use formula. Why? We have uh, mother's milk is more nutritious for an infant. It's natural. And it's natural. It has colostrum for the. But the naturalness to you know today is like a, it's perversion or something. Anything natural. A baby, uh, a human being needs the colostrum in the first uh, couple days or so that that the woman produces colostrum to build the immune system for the for the for the rest of that child's life. Mm -hmm. You know, but but the point is that that's all right. The doctor will take care of with his allergies later well, on. Pharmaceuticals, the, the pediatrician. Then he grows up to be a sick adult, yeah. a sick teenager, then a sick adult, then a sick senior citizen. More pharmaceuticals and more pharmaceuticals and so, GMOs. It's a racket. Same thing. Revolving door. The, uh, the American food industry, big pharma, big agra, politicians getting paid off. It goes around and around. Uh, from cradle to grave, it's a big racket for suckers, mm -hmm. and it doesn't end. And the stupid Americans don't even think for themselves independently to see it. They don't see it. I think some of them see it. It doesn't sink in. But as I said many times, you're not going to get those people to vote for Democrats. Because Democrats are baby killers. Because they're in a trance. I mean, they're in this under a spell. Secular humanists. Why do they... Why Some of them are atheists. Why do they believe all these lies? Because they believe them. They don't They don't bother to They're too, uh, too lazy research. to study and find out, you know, what is the truth in certain areas. George Carlin always said, George Carlin, the great prophet Carlin, you believe nothing people of authority tell you, your, what your government tells you, you you think for yourself and you re research on your own and you mm -hmm. do not believe what you're told and uh, that's part of being a free independent thinker uh, with an open mind. Now apparently these people out in the red states, these teabaggers do not have an independent, free-thinking, open mind. No, they do not, and uh, uh, they they just had that election in Mississippi with uh, Cochran and McDaniel. Yeah. McDaniel is, uh, I mean, he's 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 like a Hitler. He's like a uh, uh, 
a white supremacist, etc. And this man goes up against uh, somebody who's been in, uh, in, 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 in government for so long and everything, <coughs> and he pulls up, I think it was like 47 to 43 percent or something like that. It, you know, it's go, you go back to FDR and the elections against the people he ran against. You can't understand that the Republican had support back then. I mean, you'd think that everybody practically should have voted for FDR. Uh, Four times! Well, some Republicans, not many, but some were a voice of reason, like Dwight D. Eisenhower. Well, that was back when. Yeah, uh, you know? Teddy Roosevelt, you know, uh, back yeah, back in the day. Uh, the, the last, the last compassionate, uh, good guy president was uh, John F. Kennedy. John, I wouldn't say that because John F. Kennedy didn't get a chance to do anything. No, but but you you knew. And the reason he was killed was because he was going to shake up the CIA. Well, Martin Luther King's family uh, won a lawsuit against the federal government because he was assassinated by by the by the uh, United correct. States government, and they That's won. The, but the lawsuit never really became common knowledge. Well, well, I didn't know about it until recent. Uh, well, I knew about it a couple of years ago, but. Mm -hmm. You know, other than that, I never heard about such a lawsuit. You notice how the American media keeps many things hush-hush. That's correct. What because about the great protesting that in, 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 with multitudes, hundreds of thousands of people that are taking place in other countries against the elitists, and the American media never televises mm -hmm. these massive protests? What about these massive protests uh, lately with, uh, against Monsanto? Which you don't hear a damn thing you about. You don't hear a damn thing about all these protests and uh, uh, that are scheduled and people know in advance throughout the country, mm -hmm. even the world. This uh, march against Monsanto, which um, that's the organization. Uh, well, I have to salute them with the Lucky Shillelagh March Against Monsanto. You're you're doing a fantastic job, but people people that that do not. See, stupid people go online too, mm -hmm. but they don't read the things that myself and Dr. Bill here read. Apparently they don't, and um, I mean, we know the media lies. Even the BBC is, uh, covers uh, up. Uh, yeah. Even they cover up uh, all, the, all the shenanigans by the elitists. Mm -hmm. And, and, and a, uh, a, a, a very intelligent uh, uh, British uh, woman, her and her husband uh, run an organization, uh, a whole, uh, well, a, a progressive organization, and they write books. She told me flat out, BBC is not what it used to what? be. Yeah. It's not what it used to be. They, they, they sold out. Well, that's what happens when, when I quoted that guy in, my, in the new article, uh, Plutocrats, in uh, Newsletter Censored. Uh, to the effect that you, if 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 you have a if you I'm just paraphrasing here because I don't remember it offhand, but if you have a money interest in something that you believe in, you're going to believe it. But these poor saps out in the rural, uh, small town and rural areas of the United States, they don't have any money interests in these elections. Yeah, but they have a moral interest. I, Cult. I just told you. They're cultists. The Democrats are baby killers. Yeah. yeah they yeah. are secular oh, humans. Oh, sure. And a fertilized egg is a, is a human being. That's sure. correct. Sure, that's sure. Correct. That, yeah. that's, that's the way it goes there. The, uh, and, and gays are... Or an abomination. Uh, right now, gays are the big uh, thingy. Uh, they want them dead. They want them out of uh, power, etc. They want that gay agenda, you know, clamped down on. Clamped down on. I'm glad you said cramp. I'm, I'm getting a really huge uh -oh. spasm 
in my uh, left latissimus dorsi. Well, let's not get a spasm in your colon. We got a problem. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I hear you. I mean, uh, they demonize them, and uh, they demonize, even though they don't really know their Bibles, they, they seem to have a bat phone to God. We've said that many times. And, yeah, well, uh, they say they do. They say they do. All right, George Bush, uh, God told him to uh, invade Iraq. Well, you see what a mess that was. Now, I, God is not the author of confusion, the devil is. So right. who really spoke to George Bush? Wasn't wasn't the God of the Bible? That's correct. I want to salute Pope Francis because every time, it's guy's amazing. He, he's well, he's being he, he, he's, he's he's having problems. He is. He's being exhausted, and he's overworking. He put he, on a couple of pounds. He needs a vacation. Yeah, but he's been very busy lately. So he's a working pope. So he's only way, got one lung, you know. He does? What, he, he was a smoker way back when? I don't know what he was, but he lost the lung. Oh, he better take it easy. Way back in Argentina. So, so our Pope is pooped. That's what it amounts to right now. You got a pooped Pope. Okay? Our Pope is pooped. Yeah. We got a pooped Pope. Seen a lot of action this week. The levity bell, bells. Levity balls, bells. Okay, let us now sink our teeth. Into Speaking these, of sinking into teeth, these readings because we have we we're we're ahead on we're we we were behind last week we're ahead this week. Speaking of sinking teeth, the piranha. Article? I saw a video last night on Facebook. Yeah, there was an alligator lying in the sun on a little island in the middle of a river or whatever. Up comes a swimming tiger, alights on the island, comes over and bites the alligator on the back of the neck, takes the alligator into the water and swims back to where it is going to eat it. That was a crocodile. There's no a croc? There's no alligators in Asia. I don't know where. It well, was. It, it wasn't. It wasn't the big crocs in Australia. It was probably the smaller. Well, you know, I don't know how he got away with it because number one, if they, if if you take the alligator like the tiger and take it into the water, wouldn't that give an advantage to the alligator? It would give an advantage to the alligator or crocodile. Yes. Yeah. And also. Um, a crocodile and an alligator have this natural body armor. It's very thick. Well, his teeth went into it, buddy, because that's how he carried him back to where he was going to eat him. Must have been uh, starving because. Uh, but uh, it was very. Uh, usually. It was very deliberate because, you know, the tiger swims from where he was over to that island and then attacks the croc. I, I, I read an article where tigers have been known to swim out on the river and uh, jump up on a, on a fishing boat and Ew. attack the man that's on the boat really? and then swim back to shore. Holy mackerel. Yeah, tigers swim. Oh boy. They swim very well. Did you see that uh, <clears throat> that video, I don't know how they did it, with the dog? Who gets off the back of the boat, the boat leaves, and the porpoise comes and saves the dog. Really? Did you see that? It was, oh. Jap it was Japanese. It was Japanese, and they and they and they showed something nice about a porpoise and a and a dog. Well, it was. It had to be animated. It wasn't real, per se. Well, dolphins. The dolphin swims with the dog on the back of its uh, body. <clears throat> and takes it back to the ship well, while I, the sharks are there waiting yeah well to um, devour the dog well orcas killer whales do not have they're very smart also but they don't have the uh, the uh, the kind nature that dolphins and porpoises have <laughs> I've seen uh, saw a video of a, of a young man 
being pulled under in, in a little bit of water at the beach by mm -hmm. an orca. It was a pair of orcas, and the orca just, you could see it was an orca, and he just grabbed them by the ankle and pulled them under, and that was the last they saw. And, you know, I mean, we're not on their menu normally. Mm -hmm. And nobody could tell me that the orca mistaken the young man for um, a seal or anything like that, because the orcas, the front half, the front quarter of the orca's body was out of the water, so he can, you can plainly see that it was a human being and not a, um, and not a seal. But uh, maybe the orcas had bad experiences with humans, and then they remember, like the movie Orca. It's true. They, they 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 will remember like like an elephant, you know. And uh, people do not humans do not have a good reputation worldwide with the animal kingdom. The <clears throat> Vatican has defrocked its former ambassador to the Dominican Republic for sexually abusing boys. How come they're always bugging boys? It's the first time a top papal envoy has been convicted of the crime and signals that Pope Francis is serious about imposing zero tolerance for abuse. Good for him. I, you, you would think they would bother the nuns, but they go after the altar boys. Huh? Because they're gay. Yeah, you would, yeah. Well, that's the only... Uh explanation they're pedophiles and they're gay and 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 um, I guess Pope Francis wants to um, change things around uh, with the Catholic Church reputation of uh, all these uh, pedophile uh, priests you know all these uh, child molestation uh, cases throughout history Archbishop Joseph Weslowski was found guilty on Friday by Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith and sentenced to the harshest penalty possible against a cleric under Canaan law, laicization. Excommunication? He can no longer perform priestly duties or present himself as a priest. No, he's a, he's a lay person. He, he's, booted, he's booted out. He got the pink slip. Yay. What I would do, I would take it one step further. I would uh, fire him from the Catholic Church and I will turn him over to the authorities and have, well, him, and have, him, have him serve a sentence for uh, 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 sexually molesting a minor and let the authorities treat him like he was any other citizen doing this. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how fast all this would end. Another well, it won't end. It'll never end. No, it'll never end. Because there's a law of, against something doesn't doesn't stop people no, from, no, the, you know. The, it, won't, it, it won't end until the, until the Pope decides to uh, take away the very unrealistic, unfair rule about celibacy uh -huh. in the Catholic Church. But then again, if they're all gay, how if do you they, stop that? If they're gay, that that's that's anti uh, 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 Bible Christian. Well, that don't mean anything. Well, I mean, what I mean is, if, how could they how could they preach the word of God if the Bible's telling them it's not kosher to be gay? Mm, but that's not the point. If they're gay and they enter the priesthood. Where are they going to focus their attention? They're not going to focus it on a woman if they're allowed to marry. Well, yes, no, no, no. They're going to. Well, if they're if they're gay and they're allowed to have a relationship and be a priest at the same time. Well, they're not going to let. It, biblically, they're not going to let the gays marry. No. You got a conundrum here. Well, then don't be a priest. Be a. Ah. Bingo. Even look, even if the gay uh, clergyman uh, uh, wants to.
be a minister in a in a Protestant or non-denominational is you're still dealing with the Bible and they're, they're gonna get the same answer from a Protestant church or non-denominational organization when he when he goes to uh, when he trains to be a minister they're gonna uh -huh. give him the same answer uh -huh. You can't be a minister. But can, you can be a hypocrite, can't you? Well, we have more than enough uh -huh. of those. We have plenty of those. Uh -huh. I heard, uh, I heard, uh, whatchamacallit, what the hell's his name that, uh... Peter Popoff? I believe he just died a while ago and his, his son now does his ministry. Uh, Franklin, uh... No, Billy Graham died? Uh, Billy Graham. Billy? Yeah, I think so. No, yeah, no. Yeah, Franklin Graham. No, Billy, no, I'm serious. Billy Graham passed away? I well, if he didn't die, he should because he's... No, I think he's still alive. Well, what? in either case... All right, whatever. The point is... Franklin took over. He said on a video the other day, which I happened to see, that all religions are the same, just different routes to the same God. Oh, really? Yeah. Different routes. Different routes. You know what? All the so-called born-again evangelicals uh, think very highly of the Grams. Yes, they do. That's my point entirely. They they all like that. that They're very influential. That because they are pushy as far as proselytizing mm -hmm. and and the uh, this whole thing they have with going out and ministering to mm -hmm. people and and bugging people. Bugging people is a more apt term for it, because it's not ministering. Ministering is you're doing something for them. What they're doing, oh no, we're saving you. What? They better worry. No, you can't save nobody, they, pal. They better worry about saving themselves, because they feel they are under the impression that there is going to be a rapture. They are under the impression, and since that, they've been baptized, yes. that they are saved already. See, there's the self-righteousness involved there. Well, because uh, they uh, once you repent and accept uh, Jesus, and, yeah. uh, and they're automatically, your personal automatically your Savior, you're covered saved. by the blood, like That's like correct. like Ken creates says, covered That's by the blood. That's correct. That's correct. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Tesla Motors. Oh, oh, I got to salute Tesla Motors. The, unbelievable. The Tesla Motors uh, released all of their patents. That's how much they care about the planet Earth. And they also have a very long range on a full charge. Very long range. Doing a great job. Tesla Motors has yes. a green light to open a 27,000 square foot service center, showroom, and charging site for its electric cars on Route 17 in Paramus, New Jersey. Wow. How about that? The Paramus Zoning Board of Adjustment on Thursday evening unanimously approved several variances Tesla needed to move forward with its plan to convert the former 6th Avenue electronics store. The company said 807 Tesla owners currently live within a 25 mile radius of the site and it is hoping the showroom education center, an area where buyers can take delivery of their new vehicles will spur more Tesla ownership in the region. And I imagine with a special heavy-duty extension cord that you could very easily charge your Tesla right at home. Because every home has outdoor outlets, you know, outdoor plugs. And uh, it's, but, uh, you know, if you're going to travel the U.S., you, you still need some place to plug in, you know, eventually. You need sights, baby. But the, I think it's a lithium battery that they use, but but this, it has a very long range, you know. Great. I, I'm so happy to see this happening, and uh, I just want to salute also... Guess who didn't want this to happen? Senator, the, all Republicans. Oh, Chris Christie. 
Thank you, the fat uh, man. The fat man, Jake and the fat man. <laughs> the fat man, that, that was William Conrad. That The fat man is in bed with the fat cats. So, of course, he doesn't want, he doesn't want to see any green movement replace the uh, fossil fuels, you know. But uh, what was I going to say? Uh, yes, it has a very long range on a charge. And, uh, oh, I wanted to salute uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. I made a mistake with Bill Morrow last year. We can call him Barry Sanders, which was... What? He was a football player. Oh, Bernie God. Sanders of Vermont, that is really fighting hard, not only for our veterans, but for the Green Movement. And Germany, Deutschland. I want to salute Deutschland for being number one in the Green Movement by 2050. They plan on becoming <laughs> totally independent of fossil fuels. So Christy Ortons, a design manager for Tesla, said the company picked Paramus because response to the Tesla retail store at Westfield Garden State Plaza has demonstrated that there are many potential buyers in North Jersey. Garden State Plaza Shopping Center is very close to where we live and it happens to be one, Wait of, the a minute. one of the largest... Westfield. No, they bought it. They own it. Really? They own it. They, they, they bought all better the malls. Better change that name. They bought all the malls. Okay, better yeah. change that name because I'm thinking it's in Westfield, New Jersey. No, and no, that's just the guy. He's, he's an Australian billionaire or mm. whatever. He's, I think he's, he's from the UK or Australia. And he, uh, I wonder if he's responsible for charging business owners an astronomical rent to have space, to have a little space in the uh, Garden State Plaza shopping center. I would assume so. Like a kiosk costs thousands of dollars per month, which means you have to sell a massive amount of merchandise nonstop to, just to pay the rent and, ha and make a profit. Mm -hmm. and heaven forbid you should want to rent a store out mm. you know well he's going in the Chisler's Hall of Shame Westfield there, there seems to be quite a market here where there are people who are forward-looking and interested in switching to any electric vehicle and as long as it's affordable Tesla stopped selling cars in New Jersey because the rules the Motor Vehicle Commission began enforcing in April. Yeah. The rules effectively barred Tesla from selling cars because it does not use franchises as dealerships. No. No, why should people pay a, a huge uh, sales markup or whatever, sales fee or to have some phony lying Cheshire cat smiling uh, car dealer with a big bow tie ripping you off. Let's go to Ray Katina. All of them, they all suck. Furniture stores, <laughs> car dealers, uh, uh, they all are, uh, I don't know, they're like politicians. They're sleazy and uh, and they also like to use their, their cute little kids in the commercial because they're too cheap to hire actors. Number one, number two, they feel that it's if cute. They're, they're cute it's little kids. Oh, how cute! He's a family man. Yeah. Oh, the kids are adorable. I think I'm gonna go visit Blech. this uh, <laughs> this dealership. What what nice people they are. This is expected to change soon. <sighs> the state assembly on June the 16th voted unanimously. To allow Tesla to again sell its cars directly to consumers. The Senate is considering similar legislation. The company now operates the Garden State Plaza location and another store in Short Hills as so-called galleries. There you go. Where consumers can look at cars and learn about them but not purchase them. But you can, of course, if you want to purchase them. You know, I mean, consumers in New Jersey.
can purchase the vehicles only online. All right. The smartest way to shop nowadays. Oh yeah, with all them stinking gal dang ads popping up in front of your business that you're trying to do. Don't pay attention to them. You they, can't. They don't go away. Just click on the X. Close them out. They man. don't have X's anymore. Well, that's not nice. Oh. That's a no nice. Of course it's not nice. But that's what you got. That's, that's really rotten. Pushy. I hate pushy salesmanship. Obnoxious, pushy salespeople. They can purchase the vehicles only online through a process that allows each new Tesla to be customized by the buyer. You don't say. I do say. That's probably the probably the largest online purchase in, 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 in the history of online purchases. The Route 17 facility will have three supercharger stations that can charge a Tesla battery to 50% of capacity within 20 minutes. Do it at home. I'm sure they're charging you a higher rate as a profit, as a fee for going to the charging stations, you know, above and beyond what the PS e and of New Jersey charges homeowners. It will also have seven standard charging stations for longer term charging of cars that are being serviced or picked up by new owners. So a full charge takes 40 minutes. Maybe. Maybe well, you, would longer. you say 50% 20 would be, minutes 20. for a 50% charge. All right, so 40 minutes. Uh, well, it's a long time for somebody to sit uh -huh. in a hot sun, you know, and uh, Unless, of course, there's a, a, a plush, air-conditioned uh, waiting room that you can go in while your car is being charged. Do it at home, for God's sakes. You know, Americans are so lazy. You know, they, they, they want to go and have what somebody... They don't have enough power to get home? They want somebody to stick the fucking plug in, in for them, for God's sakes. Oh, you mean if they're, if they're low on power? Like if your cell phone only has one bar left? Oh, I get it. Well, you have to keep track of how uh, how fully charged your battery is. You don't go zipping around when you when you're down low. Some people drive on E. Yeah, they drive on fumes. <laughs> what about that that Seinfeld uh, Seinfeld? Uh, yeah. Oh, Kramer version. He, he wanted, wanted a, to see how long. He how wanted long? to test. Yeah, he wanted to test the car, and he, but he but he wanted to go further and further and further and further and. Yeah. And the guy ran out of gas on the highway, <laughs> and then uh, Kramer says, "Well, I'm done here. Bye." And he like runs out. <laughs> Attorney Stuart Liebman, in presenting Tesla's request for the variances to the Paramus Board, called the proposal a great opportunity to replace a long, vacant, and neglected retail space with a brand. Paramus can be very proud to have within its borders. Paramus is a very large, flat, sprawled out community, yep. uh, borough, uh, town, uh, that is known for retail. It is a huge retail and uh, office space town, but they also have a very large, uh, lovely uh, suburban, you know, residential area. And the taxes in Paramus are supposedly low because of so many retail stores and malls uh, and office buildings taking up the slack. Isn't that funny how that works? That when the corporations pay their fair share of taxes, it's better for the middle class and poor? Absolutely. Gee whiz, then why do our laws allow the companies to go overseas? So they don't have to pay those taxes. And why don't they tariff the hell out of those products? Why don't they when they, they bring them back to the U.S. them sales in the United States? Many things could be done, sir. That's correct. But then. they're not done. That's correct. The regulation. Because conservatives in the House 
and possibly the Senate to are paid off. Free market. The free market. Route 17 is becoming a magnet for luxury car brands. Oh, that's another thing. They're, they have tons of dealerships in Paramus on Route 17 and some on Route 4. Drawn by household incomes in northern New Jersey that are among the highest in the country. Oh. Tesla prices. Uh oh, here we go. Yeah. Here we Start go. Start at close to $70,000. Okay. Silence. Silencio. Tesla. You're doing a great thing for the for the country, the, the environment, and the green movement. But let me tell you something, brother. I have just inducted you into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Are you out of your mind? Seventy thousand yeah, dollars. Who, 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 who is going to be able to afford those cars? Let me tell you something. You have some. No, no, I didn't even notice. Uh, this did. was this was not rehearsed. You have some nerve using the good name of Nikola Tesla, a man who wanted to provide free electricity for everyone in the world because it can be done. Yeah. You're using the name of one of the greatest scientists in the history of the planet Earth, but also a very unselfish, hell of a nice guy. Unselfish man that did not sell out to uh, uh, J.P. Morgan. Morgan and Rockefeller like, like Thomas Edison did, the corporate whore, but he wanted to give free electricity to all. You're using his name, besmirching his name by gouging people out of 70 grand just to start with, right? It's, it, it, yes, a, 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 a vehicle can cost more than $100,000 depending you, on the features. You definitely have a big comfortable lounge chair in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you. And in the words of uh, of Sean Morrison, who I will say hello to also, and, and his... Uh, and Gina Hollywood. And his girlfriend, uh, G, uh, his main squeeze, uh, Gina Hollywood. Shame, shame, shame. He'll, he'll get a kick out of that. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, continue. This is in reference to a letter that appeared in our uh, local newspaper, The Record. Oh, I burned a lot of calories there. The, <laughs> the writer speaks of venomous attacks on Governor Christie. Venomous? Venomous. Ooh, they're venom what about his attacks? Ooh. They're not venomous? Ooh, venomous. I wonder how the writer would feel if he was a retired teacher <sighs> whose pension was being attacked. Got time. Would he take the action calmly if he had paid into the pension fund, trusting that it was going to protect his future years, and suddenly was denied the funds? Did he stand in front of a classroom with the responsibility of educating his students to give them a better life? I challenge anyone to take on the huge responsibility of an educator who becomes an integral part of the life of a student forever. Are teachers appreciated? Most people who think teachers have it easy should see the hours of paperwork after the bell rings and on weekends. Anyone would condone the fact that fiscal matters can't be respon the responsibility of one person. But what happened to election promises? Doesn't sound like bullying? Isn't holding our pension money back defined as stealing our savings? I'm sure that the beleaguered governor could have discovered another way to balance the budget rather than to bully teachers and other state workers. He's a dictator. totalitarian not only politically but at the buffet he, he totalitarians all the food for himself totally you know 
any more info about that? About Fatso? Uh, I'm just checking out what we should go into here. Oh, the oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Were you finished with that reading or no? Yeah. Okay. Remember, speaking of Chris Christie and Republicans, there is no trickle down economics. There is only siphon up to the uh, one, the top one to ten percent economics, the devil's economics. Siphon up. This is a siphon, by the way. No trickle down. There is no trickle down, okay? And I also have my slide whistle here because I just remembered what Minnesota's uh, Michelle Bachman had said. Uh -huh. She made a statement. This just reminds me of what Sarah Palin and Bachman sound like because they're, they're such idiots. Michelle Bachman says that... Uh, the Republicans want to, uh, and we should, uh, want to eliminate the minimum wage because uh, it will uh, create, it will solve the unemployment problem completely because uh, uh, jobs will be created at whatever level they happen to be. Yeah. Yeah. A dollar. Whatever level, she emphasized whatever level yeah. would Michelle Bachman and her family work at whatever level at whatever wage? No, because she's an elitist. Why do you think she, she would be bothered with a $7.25 an hour job? So she's what, an elitist. So whatever wage at whatever level is is okay for mainstream America, but not for them. Of course, a dollar an hour. Newt Gingrich, hey. So they feel a job is a job. That's right. So how are you supposed to live on, on, You're not. on less than minimum? Get that out of your head. Stop with these idealistic ideas. Well, the, they don't want you to live. So why don't they just come they out and say drop all. dead? Well, they don't have to say drop dead. But they, they, they want it all. But they, they really want you to perish if you're poor. They want it all. What about the people, uh, what about every, everybody else who's living in the gutter? CEO of Nestle. The water, you have no right to it. It's no. mine because I can buy it. Because I can buy it. Okay. Because he can. That's correct. Because he can. That's what I'm saying. They want it all. They want it all. Then you have nothing. You have nothing to fight back with. But you. Then you can drop dead. But you literally have nothing. Yeah. And then you die. What's your other option? Steal it no, from I'm him. Right. Steal it from him. This is what. Michelle Bachman and Sarah Palin sound like uh, they're such idiots, but maybe they're crazy like a fox. Maybe they pretend to be idiots, but they have an evil agenda and they don't want... They are idiots. You, oh, they really are idiots? Yes, they are. They will never... Neither of them were ready for prime time. Okay. They're not ready for dog catcher, for God's sakes. They are empty skirts. They work well on a local level, provincial. So they're but when you get to a wider level, they have no schmacks. So they really are pure, simple corporate whores. They they're are simple. They are coke simple suckers. Tons. Coke suckers. Simpletons. Simpletons, but corporate whores. Like, the, Fox, like the people on Fox News. Corporate whores. Forbes. Yeah, well, look, some people can be promoted to positions they are not qualified for. And that's what you have in those two women. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Coulter, too. You can throw her in there. And Coulter? Yeah. Yeah. She's ugly. I saw a picture of her. These women broke the glass ceiling, <laughs> and there's no way back. <laughs> the only one who's good looking is, is Hasselfuck. I mean Hasselbeck. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hasselbeck should be used in a commercial for Gorilla Tape. Because that's what she needs wrapped around her mouth. Ooh. Is Gorilla Tape. That's all. My wife and I have long enjoyed our writings on travel. We are, however, troubled that in a story on the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Library, the writer referred to U.S. presidents as 
our commanders in chief. This, they most emphatically are not. They are in commanders in chief of the armed forces only. Admittedly, FDR repeatedly sought to give himself sweeping powers, as when he tried to pack the Supreme Court to prevent it from interfering with his schemes. But he failed. And we may fervently hope that no future president is any more successful in such an ego trip. We owe no less to ourselves and our descendants. All right. The American Woodstock. Wood. Stork. Bird. It's like a crane. A bird scientists once feared would be extinct by the year 2000 has made such an impressive comeback that it's getting an official status upgrade 30 years after first being listed as an endangered species. Oh, last week you spoke about the passenger pigeon. That's I remember. Great. Now it's the American... But they woods. are extinct. They're extinct, unfortunately. The tall, bald, wading birds. That's W-A-D, wading, wading in the I know. water. Wading in the water, yeah. That nest in swamps and coastal marshes from Florida to the Carolinas are now a threatened species. A step that up that indicates the wood stork is no longer considered at risk of extinction. It's a day for good news about an iconic bird from the southeast that is doing a great job of recovery. There's still important work to do before we can propose to remove it from the list altogether. Until then, threatened species receive essentially the same legal protections as endangered species. Standing nearly four feet tall, with a wingspan of five feet, mostly legs and wing, the wood stork is the only stork species that nests in the United States. The bird's survival depends on ability to nest in wetlands with an abundance of fish and trees surrounded by water to protect eggs from predators. Yeah, well, if you're in the southeast, you've got plenty of predators. The stork population was once anchored in Florida, but destruction of wetlands in the Everglades and elsewhere to make way for development. Here we go. Development. Decimated their numbers. Destroying Mother Nature for profit, like the rainforest. Here we go. From an estimated 40,000 breeding adults in the 1930s to roughly 10,000 in the 1970s. Researchers say the species has made a remarkable resurgence by expanding its territory from southern Florida, where 70% of the population once lived. No. They can go to Louisiana. To, to establishing nesting colonies in Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. Well, wherever there's marshland, uh, freshwater uh, marshes and, uh, and swamps. After the nesting season, wood storks can be found in parts of Alabama and Mississippi. There you go, Mississippi, right? The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service estimates there are as many as 9,000 breeding birds. Well, remember, the bird is the word. 
bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. Bird, 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 bird. Anyway, how much time we got? One more? We're none. Got about eight minutes. Eight minutes? You better pick a small one then. If you have a small one. Well, we'll see if I have a small one. Because if I don't have a small one, I ain't going to read a big one. Yeah, it has, nothing, it has nothing to do with the Reverend Dr. Bill's uh, chorizo or schlong. It has to do with the readings when he says having a small one. Recent comments by Governor Christie suggesting that New Jersey's pensioners had the potential to turn the state into another Detroit <laughs> are a virtual accusation that those who collect pensions are parasitic leeches. Oh, but not, not his rich friends and, and, and Chris Christie's salary and, and, and perks and benefits. Oh, they're not parasitic. Draining the very bone marrow from the public trough. But, but the politicians are not. Ah, oh, they're such hypocrites, these Republicans. Perhaps Christie forgot that those people paid into the pension fund year in and year out over the span of their working years. Perhaps Christie forgot that the lawyers he paid to exonerate him in the recent George Washington Bridge probe were paid out of public funds that they never paid uh, into. Yeah, just like that uh, politician up in Maine, I don't know if it was he's the governor or what, I should have wrote his name down. Uh, he made, he made a, he was talking about, he was complaining about social services and welfare yeah. and the jerk lumped Social Security in with the welfare. Hey, stupid. They do it all the time. Right-wingers, jerk-offs, idiots. Social Security is not an entitlement. It was paid for. Ugh. Lying son of a bitches, man. Most important, perhaps Chris and New Jersey citizens, long battered by governmental abuse, have forgotten that a law was passed stating that payments into the pension fund were to be made yearly. Any governor who forgets that it is the law should be arrested upon signing a budget lacking such payments why into are, the fund. Why are people like Chris Christie Teflon uh, politicians? It's almost like, well, until, I'm sorry, until that federal, what is it, investigator, a prosecutor, the man who, who Attorney uh, General. The man who went after Scott Walker and he and he said he's going to go after Chris Christie next. Oh, I don't know him. Yeah. yeah, they got some dirt on Scott Walker. Governor Christie has clearly displayed a laggard's approach to his job in that he skipped the hard work of balancing his budget. He saw the shortfall amount and in a glance found a similar big number to cancel it out. As broccoli cancels out a donut. Now, depending, depends on how many donuts you eat. <laughs> this easy pen stroke has the added benefit of preserving his failed ideology, Reaganomics. Oh, there we go, Reaganomics, trickle down, trickle dickle, trickle down, see? Siphon up. On camera, the governor has trash talk teachers, but never cops. <sighs> Both of these groups have unions whose pension funds have been raided. So they are equal enemies in Christie's eyes. Trash-mouthing teachers is easy because they don't fight back. Yeah, that's my next question when he's done. By nature, they are nurturers. But cops, by nature, fight back. Well, I was speaking to a uh, Bergen County Sheriff Department uh, uh, police officer at motor vehicle and she uh, she told me 
teachers are not the only ones that hate Chris Christie. Yeah. The cops hate Chris Christie, and the um, state employees of all kinds of hate Chris Christie. But why are the re are the why are the Democrats in Trenton so nice to him? <laughs> Oh, no. They you know nobody you know he's only a bully because nobody stands up to him. You get some Democrats that raise their voice and you know get tough. And and just like hey uh, Barbara Bono, he Christie was like he was all wimpy. How do you know hands? He was wimpy. I didn't see Chris Christie raise his voice and get nasty and demonstrative with Barbara Bono. She was all over him too. You stand up to the bully with facts, and if they get unfair with you, you get tough, and you get mean, and you get you raise your voice, and you just hit them hard. A barrage, one after the other, and the bully backs oh. down. It's in their job description, so Christie does not attack them. I'm a math teacher. And unlike the governor, I understand compounding and exponential effect. The budget mess won't go away soon, but Christie will. And he will leave New Jersey very much worse than he found it. Absolutely. Just like uh, G.W. Bush left the country after, after two terms. But yeah. why, why must Christie, Chris Christie, and people like him and Scott Walker and, and the the past G.W. Bush. Why must these people ever get reelected? That's what puzzles me. And they get a pass. They look get, at the, the look people. At the, the people are reelecting them. Look at all the boobs who screwed up Iraq, and they're all talking heads on television, telling us what to do now. And what is they all screwed up? What, concerning Iraq, what does the media do? They 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 go to uh, Dick Cheney for advice and opinions. Yes, yes. That's like going to Satan and getting advice from him. Hey, you can <laughs> eat that apple. You shall not surely die. Just to get, just you know, uh, uh, interview Satan as a uh, as a political analyst and take his advice. It's the same thing. Taking God, Dick Cheney's God, advice. God knows that when you eat of that apple, you will be like him, knowing both good and evil. Yeah, and that God is is doesn't want you to n learn anything. He doesn't want you to know these things. You know all these lies. But Dick Cheney, how much money do you want and need for a guy to have an old geezer with a mechanical heart? He's got one friggin' foot on the banana peel. Yeah, like five heart attacks already. He's got one foot on the banana peel and the other foot in the grave. What the hell are you going to do with that money being that you're a feeble old geezer? Well, he's trying to get his daughter elected to something. Oh, you know? gosh. To carry on the legacy. Uh, well, look, if these Republicans continue, continue to have all these numbskull lemmings that are willing to follow them and vote for them, they will continue to survive. Yeah. But they will ruin the country in the interim. Well, they already, There's ruined, the problem. they already ruined the country. That's correct. And they can do a better job of it, believe me. Okay? That's true. That's the, true. Nothing from the outside the United States can take it down. Only from within. We have to stop these uh, wicked... Uh, Corporations, number one, because uh, of course they're, they must be the ones that are paying off the politicians. You know, your CEOs of Nestle, your your Walton family of Walmart, your Monsanto, so on and so on. Anyway, we are going to break for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and I will. Now, while he's eating, I will now meet with our voiceover artist, William H. Morrow, for our little sit-down, and followed by our promo commercial, and then we will be back uh, for the balance of uh, this uh, Independence Day, July 4th week show. Um, very invigorating, to say the least. 
Um, all right, we'll see. Saturday in the park. Every day's the fourth of July. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, now uh, William H. Moore the third. I um, we were just discussing before about lying in advertisement. Like uh, an example, the, what was it? The Coca Cola company made palm. Well, and they it's had also the word you use in advertising too. What does enriched mean, and all this other stuff? Yeah. What does natural mean? It came out this week. It's been all, all papers. What does natural really mean? Right. And what does it mean when it says made with 100% so-and-so juice? And, and being that the, uh, the FDA and the USDA is uh, very questionable, their information, because I'm sure they're paid off, the, um, how do we know the ingredients that are listed in the, in the ingredients in the, in the, uh, really don't know, in the yeah. order it's in? How do we know that's the predominant you know, uh, ing uh, who do you trust? primary ingredient? Who do you trust? Even your vitamin companies, you can't trust the alternative medicines. They're they, cheating on the vitamin. They got ca vitamin shop got caught years ago with uh, salt palmetto extract. Well, it's not just them. It's the others too. False information. Whatever's so on the label is not we, in the product. Who can we trust? That's a very good question. I have no answer to that. There was an article concerning Golden Corral. Remember we were talking about Golden Corral? Oh, they have such reasonable prices. I wish we had one around here. Well, they saw the condition of the food that comes in the shipment, and it was before, disgusting. Before it was cooked, you mean? Before it was cooked. The health department, they were hiding it from the health department, obviously, but it was horrible. It was, it was a definite failure. With with any he reputable health inspector, it was it was. So it was it, their food quality was in violation of. Food yes. Food oh, quality. it was atrocious. It was terrible. As far as what violations, though? I mean, uh, as bacteria. As far, yes, uh, as far as that. It wasn't refrigerated know. during shipment. Uh, the, the, yes, the 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 the, uh, the safety of the food was definitely questionable because of that. Leaving it outside, taking forever to bring it into the the restaurant. I can't do that. You know, when the truck comes, they, instead of bringing it in refrigeration immediately or a freezer. You can't do that. You know, it's uh, You might as well let, leave your mayonnaise out in the sun for an hour and then feed your people. There you go. I mean, if you want to get people sick, you know what's going to happen, or you should be and, aware of what's and, going to happen. And the funny thing is... And wait, let me interrupt you. Don't these, all these companies, from, from what I've heard, anybody in the food industry must attend a food handler's course. They must. So don't these managers and all this know from these these restaurants or whatever? I, whatever happened to the food handlers hey, course? What about people that get the driver's license and they take the they pass the written test and I, they pass the road test and they drive like like irresponsible or maniacs? Yeah, I know on. people that owned a little tiny coffee stand or concession with other things too, like she'd make her scones at home, which were wonderful and everything else, and donuts. Took the food handlers course. She was immaculate. <laughs> You can eat off her equipment. Well, that, so that, why can't others do it if you if she could? That's because she has the right way of thinking. She has the right attitude. She she wants to make what money she can. Well, she did for, for very well. Well, she cares about long term instead of short term. Her customers either. Well, well, she she wants repeat customers and she wants word of mouth advertisements. She had a lot of daily repeat customers because, all the time. Listen, people can taste, people can see and taste quality. Customers. Well, you, it, it's been known to be able. You can disguise it too. Yeah, that's it's called tricks of the trade. The chefs know all these little tricks. Not I'm yeah. saying they disguise, but make things better sometimes. Like I didn't know years ago till a guy I used to know, a friend of mine owned a, a, a restaurant in Ridgewood. He was Greek. I said, "How oh, your eggs always look so different than mine when I do them at home?" Blah blah blah. I said, "Is there some big secret you, you cooks know?" He goes, "Billy, it's so simple. We just a little bit of olive oil to coat the pan." He said, a little bit of olive oil to coat the pan and fry your eggs or whatever. Scramble. That's what I do. Yeah, I do too. I didn't know, but this was 20 years ago. I didn't know. And uh, that was one of them. Oh, well, it enhances the flavor of them too. Well, it makes them slide easier and they don't, you know, yeah. they're. Well, with a, with, a, with, a, with a stainless steel chef pan, you have to put a little oil. And I'm not saying a lot, but. Any, you know? Anything, even not stick, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my, my uh, sister bought the or, or, organic green 
Or, or, or Greenick. Or Greenick. She says, forget it. She says, it worked for two days and then everything... But was, she, was she putting butter or oil in the pan too? She was doing both, like the commercial. She did, did it with nothing. Then she did it with, with uh, you know, oil or butter. And she says, eventually everything was sticking. It was a complete fraud. The you remember the one that came out shortly after where Greenick had had a blue diamond coating. Really? It was blue that you don't see at all. What about the hose? Lived. The garden hose that, that inflates? I've uh, heard nothing bad about that. Well, Ma Mario, my friend Mario bought one. He did a video of it. He was cursing it out, man. Really? The, the one that in the material hose that inflates? Well, speaking of SCNLGB, I mean, I've known a lot of people, and you've known a few too, that have bought the new Wave Up, and I've heard nothing but f great reviews and raves. Sometimes in it works. Every one of my friends says we no longer use our regular hose. But does it have a long term warranty on it? Yeah. Because it's an electrical appliance. Yeah, they give you, I think it's a five year or some other extended warranty. It's a very good warranty. Well, what I, no I noticed about business people today, in the past, when there was a problem, they used to apologize to you and and make it right now they, they're in denial they, they they sort of blame you with your wrong well you're on, you, you know I mean they they they, they defend they don't acknowledge their mistake have you ever in your life seen so many automotive recalls no never, every never. manufacturer is like a plague going on here it is yeah. unbelievable. I mean, they're supposed to at least give the customer the benefit of the doubt and at least it, investigate it. And be honest, if you uh, made a mistake, admit to the, the customer line that you is made a mistake. There are a lot of people dead because of this, the engineering defects. This is, you can't That's bring them serious. Back. That's serious. Uh, you can't bring them back, so we're well, it could be. It could be anything. It could be like a mechanic. You know, you report. Uh, they do a job on your car, and you and you these, report to them. Supposedly, these engineers, at least from GM, knew about this and did nothing. Oh no, I'm not talking about the brand new vehicles menu from men, from the manufacturer. I'm talking about if you have a job done on your car, well, yeah. and and you did they did the job within a year, and you have the same problem you brought it in for, and they and they sort of make it like it's it's you and not them. Well, that's the attitude a lot of business people have well, nowadays. The, it's rare that they will admit fault or, or, or guilt. Well, usually to a customer, they would say, oh, I'm very sorry you're having this problem. Well, yeah. well let's let's take a look at it. You know, at least... We're just looking in the eye and say, Hoss, we blew it. I'm sorry. There you go. What's wrong with admitting it? The, the fact. Right, right. I mean, why do you try to blame everybody? It's always the other person's fault. And, uh, I don't know. Nobody steps up to the, to the plate, as they say. Yeah. You know? No, nobody, nobody does that. Now, um, you know, in uh, okay. What I mean is, all this time they didn't know how to do it. I went over in a matter of five seconds. Yeah. Did it. Well, close. We're talking about closed caption on the screen. Did you know that when? Um, okay, my my mom's hard of hearing. She needs closed caption. But when the weather report comes on. It goes over the temperature. Yeah. It goes. It, the caption goes right over the report instead of well, being lower. The captioning oscillates. At times, it'll be in the up, yeah. upper left hand. Other times, it'll be, it goes up and down different times for some reason. Yeah, it does. It's, it's not at, in a constant spot. Instead of staying in a constant spot away from everything where you could at least see, and, and see it's it. It's annoying to watch. So you, you try to look at the picture and then read you know, little things like glancing, glancing. I could not get I could not get Sunday. I could not get Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday's temperature because the damn closed caption was covering yeah. the uh, the numbers. Yeah. Now, I was discussing with my friend Mario Petrus about uh, something that I have noticed over the years, and this has to do with people in the entertainment industry. It could be any entertainment, anybody in the spotlight. It could be pro wrestling. It could be acting. It could be commercials, production. They, the people, they're different, obviously, than other individuals that are not in the spotlight. They seem to be the most narcissistic, self-centered people I've ever seen in my life, even with a friend. You know, if a, if a friend of theirs, and, and I know from personal experience about this, if a friend has tremendous talent, they will not so much as mention their friend to their agent and try to hook up their friend. Right. And it, right. it happened not just with people we know, but it hap it sort of happened with somebody else I know too. I mean, you you show them your proof of your abilities, 
and they're in the industry and they obviously know people but Nothing. Unless they know what you can do and what you're capable of, they don't seem like they're willing to help you in any way. Yeah, well, it's no skin off their nose to mention, oh. to drop your name to their agent and say, look, I know this guy, he's unbelievable, he's got, he does this, he does that. Would you like to make an appointment with him or talk to him on the phone? Nothing. Because well, I know, I know who you're talking about, I'm not going to name his name, but yeah. every time you mention him, you corner him an awful lot of times. Yeah, he's not the only one, though. Oh, I know. Yeah, you corner him and, and he changes his mind. He says, yes, oh, I can't. Can. Oh, yeah, I guess I can. I oh, guess I can, yeah. right. You know, I uh, think they're so insecure they that, that they think everybody, even their friend, might take away, steal their thunder, well, take away are, their spotlight. We are. We're all plotting to go out and get, their, take, get them out of the industry for ourselves. We're greedy. Yeah, it's a plot. It's like you know, everybody's out to get McEnroe. Remember, you can say, what is this, a conspiracy? If I was the, the line judge, I would say, Yes, John, it is. <laughs> oh, he was that <laughs> paranoid? No, he got that angry. That's what he, It was very entertaining. He really, he yeah. He thought everybody was, why is this a conspiracy? Yeah, but and, when he, when he got know, beat, did he get beat fair and square? Oh, I'm like, yeah. Well, yeah. then what is he bitching about? <laughs> well, sometimes a love bull was on the line or was out, and they called it in and uh, argue, and, you know. And, oh, it's like when an, um, uh, a coach or an umpire. Like, crazy, that ball was out. What is this, a conspiracy? It's like with baseball, yeah. He's very, he's very entertaining and likable. It was back in the more glamorous years of uh, the tennis with him and Jimmy Connors and Yvonne Lindo. And he was always in, in the media, John McEnroe. But it was just entertaining. Yeah. It was fun. And he was very good. I mean, let's be honest, he was one of the greatest. That was his gimmick, man. Yeah. That was his gimmick. Yeah. And then Bobby Riggs had that thing with Billie Jean King. Yeah. It kind of adds some color to well, tennis. he was so old when he played her. That was really just for entertainment purposes. Yeah. You know, yeah he was, uh, yeah. Oh, I think he was 108 when he played her. I'm kidding. Yeah, I mean, Bob, Bobby stuff. Riggs in his prime was quite good. Oh, yeah. When he was young. Oh, he was very, very good. You know, I remember Arthur Ashe. Poor well, guy. He died. died. He, he died. Well, overly premature. I think from a blood transfusion. He, oh, was it AIDS? AIDS? Oh, he did get blood transfusion. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. And who was the first lead, pretty much, well-known female actress to die of AIDS in Hollywood? Miss Kitty, Amanda Blake from Gunsmoke. Really? From a blood transfusion as well. Oh my gosh. Amanda Blake. I didn't know yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Farrah Fawcett had a tra tragic death too. Yeah. You know, yeah. but uh, the uh, cancer of the... Um, yeah, she was a nice person. Of the all, all lower, the, lower extremities? Yeah. I'm not sure where it was. But yeah. There, yeah. But, uh, well, you know, it doesn't surprise me with the amount of toxic chemicals that the FDA, the FDA allows in our food with Monsanto uh, paying everybody off and having control o over our food supply. You know, they made a statement one time that said when you control the food supply, you control the people. Talk about wickedness and How long will that, how, how that last year you get caught? Then you create a revolution, they'll come and get you. The people are catching on now. Sooner or later, somebody's going to uncover it. They t they're taking many polls now, and they're saying, "Do you, do you, do you trust this? Do you trust that? Do you trust your food?" Everybody's well, saying, "No." I don't. Administration, what they're doing to our veterans, they didn't get away with it. They're getting caught now. The atrocities they've been committing, and who caught them? CNN. You know that you know Dick Cheney had the nerve recently to call Barack Obama a, a traitor. Meanwhile, him and G.W. Bush are guilty of war crimes that they got off scot-free. What war crimes? Well, with everything that went on in Iraq, you know, no. Well, it was a war. No weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure they're not somewhere still. I'm. Now, I, don't, I, I, I strongly believe they are somewhere. I do. Uh, Bush and Cheney are as guilty as they come. No, no, that wasn't a war crime. What war crime? No, they they, they did other things with Halliburton. The whole thing with Halliburton. They got contracts. That's not a war crime. No, they sent they sent troops there ba uh, for their own personal gain, profit. It's war profiteering. It's called. Well, I think it was called a lot, corruption. A lot of the tie into nine eleven. We want revenge too. You know, it was also investigators proved that uh, that was an inside job. Nine eleven. Because of the way the buildings, ex uh, the the explosion, 
that took place from well, below. A conspiracy for everything, but no, they were just the way they were built. There was no center beam. That's why they pancaked them down. The weight just pancaked them yeah. all the way down. It was just no center beam. Now the new one has supposedly a center beam. Well, but that was the style back in those yeah. days. He didn't need that. Right. Well, the Bush administration uh, pretty much destroyed the surplus that was left to him by uh, Bill Clinton. Uh, not that Bill Clinton was was not was an angel or anything, because he got rid of Glass Steagall, and uh, he was a corporatist. You know, he played ball. Well, he played all, ball. When, when you have that kind of money and stuff dangling in front of you, and corporations do do a lot for America too. You know, a lot. Some do some bad. Some do some great things. What, what great things do they do besides send American jobs to China? I mean, what, what are they? Well, do? a lot of it's money and everything else that they give philanthropically, creating jobs. Uh, manufacturing wasn't destroyed by corporate America, that was destroyed by your unions. The wages are so high you cannot afford to manufacture in this nation. The unions were just looking for a a, uh, a livable, decent wage. So it's far exceeded on. that. You can't afford paying people sometimes forty, fifty, sixty dollars an hour to make a TV. Where you can pay people that, and that's living like a king in Mexico. Why do you think, why we keep blaming the U.S.? Do you know how many foreign country, countries have their manufacturing facility in Mexico alone? Not, not to mention other countries. Yeah, that's traitorous in itself. But, but you know why? Outsourcing. Yeah. Money is cheaper. But well, why isn't the cost of living uh, becoming uh, more fair and and lower? I mean, the, the salaries are go. They want the salaries to go down, but the cost of living continues to rise. So somebody is price gouging someone. Yeah, I don't know why the price of living keeps going up. Why can't it be stopped for a while? Why didn't they just, who, I forget who the president was, put a price freeze on something like that way back. He said, that's it. No increase. It's frozen. Well, they, they keep on gouging people and, and people's, uh, and the average salary stays the same. You can't afford to really live. You, you know, you just exist. Yeah, everything you come in, you, you get, it goes right out the window on bills. You're right. How many people do you think, I, 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 I would guess probably 80, 90 percent of people here are late on certain bills or getting their electricity turned off or their phone turned off and then, as you know, you hear about the elderly have to, are living on a fixed retirement income or social security. They've got to decide, a lot of people each month, some of these elderly, whether they buy their prescriptions because they don't have coverage, whether they buy their prescriptions or pay uh, their electric bill or rent. Or you food. Can't, you can't do without any of those. Or, or, or their groceries, too. All three or four are necessities. Okay, so I'm eating now, but I'm, I'm sick as a dog because I can't take my drugs. Look at all the oh, look at all the home foreclosures, the uh, middle-class people that got laid off, lost their jobs. I mean, there's people living in tents. You know the, the tent people, the homeless tent people in Lakewood that were in the woods? That's gone right here. Everybody. You know they evicted them from the woods? That's gone about a month ago, I think. I mean, just picture it. You're getting evicted but from the woods. Didn't they put them up in subsidized housing or something or apartments somewhere? They did put them somewhere. They weren't just kicked out. They, it was they, good. they didn't want them they in got, the woods. They got better than what they had. Better than tents is what I'm saying. Well, but the news is saying they got a, the poor people got evicted, and then that's as far as they went. But they did get placed. Yeah, and I heard it was very nice. So let's did, hope so. I hope they got placed somewhere nice. But, you know, getting back to show business, it's... Uh, they, uh, like if you send a message, uh, like an email to somebody in the spotlight, you're lucky if you get back one word from them. It's almost like you're you mean a, a, an actor or somebody. It could be, it could be a model, it could be an actor. Well, I could be, really see it. I mean, they're, they're, they're one of their people who will see it, will do it, respond for them. It's almost like, can you send me a photo? Yeah. It's like, send her a photo, I'll sign it. Just, or somebody else will sign it, we'll yeah. be there. Well, some, you know, some people do handle their own promo pages. Some do. Yeah, some I, I know, for handles. a fact, Linda Blair uh, 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 monitors her own page. Good for her. And, uh, and she's involved with animal rights very activism. Big, very yeah. big, I also hear that the big, big country star, uh, Taylor Swift is wonderful with people. Yeah. You know, the I've guy, heard nothing bad about uh, her. Steve so. Deshavi from The Dead Files. Uh, he's a retired New York City uh, no. homicide detective and a Marine. Uh, he's on the. He's one of the, the stars of The Dead Files. I posted something on this page. He answered me back within within one minute. It was him. Right, Some right. people are not lazy, pretentious, and narcissistic. Right. They have to hire other people to manage their own pages. 
But then let's be honest, if you're some somebody big and you're getting hundreds or tens of thousands, how in the world could you answer all of that? You don't have time. You can't, you don't have time. You need a staff to do that for yeah. you. Well, if you're a sem if you're a semi-star, okay. not a yeah, superstar. And you're only getting so many, then take the time, yes. Yeah. But when you're getting tens or hundreds of thousands, what are you going to do? Yeah. You have no choice. Rather than be mean, they actually don't have to respond at all. Just so their staff is responding is nice too. At least yeah. we're acknowledging. Yeah. Receipt of your letter or email, or what have you. So yeah, it's just it's just a shame that uh, technology, as wonderful as it is, took a lot of the humanity oh, out of humans. With yeah, too uh, much. Uh, yeah, too much. yeah, I um I was I'm very upset at this woman in Staten Island, this this evil scumbag demon. She she had an English bulldog. Oh. She poured ammonia in his eye, one of his uh. eyes. Now, a beautiful, pure Why? breed dog like that. Why? That's the question. What was her reason? She says she she didn't think it would do anything. Some What'd she do in the first place? I have no idea. So what did they do to her? Is she under arrest? No, she got arrested. She tried to justify it. Now, come on. Maybe the dog had some disciplinary problem. Maybe he didn't like her. Maybe she was a, she's a witch. Maybe the dog didn't like his owner. that dog again, I hope. I hope not. Maybe the dog didn't like his owner and, and didn't obey her for a reason. But I think it was a cruelty. Obviously, animal no, I'll cruelty. I don't go for this. You know, and uh, there are people circulating petitions, thank God, for more animal rights. And I know we've discussed this in the past. I strongly believe in more stronger penalties just like hurting a human for hurting an animal as well not yeah. just two or three month jail sentences come on no no that's a slap on the wrist where you're really uh, you know no i love animals too too much well speaking of cruelty you know they found a huge mass grave of uh bodies of uh immigrants from mexico in texas when? in a hole recently oh, i know they did about a couple weeks ago that was it that must have oh, been it the well, mass is sure. a mass grave i'm sure there are more out there sadly it said they were in garbage bags so these uh, these poor souls come to look for a better, better come, life come to look for a, a better life their life taken from them and then have their life taken from them well they're being lied to down there too that's why they're all coming up in droves right now you know how they trick girls to come and they, they put them in prostitution in the United States? They tell them, they pro promise them a career as a model in the United States. Well, they also tell them about that new law in the United States. Once you cross the border, you're allowed to stay. It's not true. It's not true. But they don't know that. So what, what so, these wicked, evil, greedy monsters are doing... They just want to get money and get you over the border and leave you alone. They're exploiting the poor. They're just doing anything for money. Right. Anything they're, they're, for money. They're getting these people for dirt cheap labor. Yeah. Now, the, what's worse than that, and outsourcing, and, and that cruelty, is uh, uh, putting people in prison for frivolous, stupid reasons like marijuana. Well, especially back since the 70s, there are people in prison be, because cops found a, a marijuana seed in their car. A seed. One guy is wow. uh, three strikes. It one guy is in, pizza. is in jail f for life for making marijuana brownies, but a, a convicted murderer is out on parole. They showed Explain it in, te in, te me. in Texas. Oh, I think that's going to be changed. Cause everybody's having an uproar about that. Do you mean the 19-year-old boy? No, this was a, a an older man who made. Oh, this is a 19-year-old boy. They want to give him life in prison for making brownies with pot. And everybody's having a fit, and they're even the lawyers, the prosecutors said, "Wait, wait that's minute. insane. We've got to change some things here, people. Isn't that Let's insane? be fair here, okay? You know, murder is getting less of a sentence than a guy making brownies with grass in it. So you got some people high, but you killed ten people. Okay, you can go. You brownie boy, sit down. Is it, you were telling me about the criminal justice system in the United States. It's totally out insane. Well, certain things it's so unbalanced. It really is. It, it's, oh my just God. doesn't make sense." what they do to people. I mean, but you know what else they do in, in these privatized prisons with these people? They make them work for free, slave labor. Well, you're there, pay for your keep, I guess. Keep? Nobody promises you're a country club in prison. Yeah, but this is a sneaky way that corporations are getting free slave labor instead of hiring employees. Well, so are the states. Because you, you know how much... Yeah, how, how long prisons made license plates? 
incarcerations up 700 percent, and a lot of them, a lot of them are frivolous uh, crimes like uh, marijuana and stuff like that. It's just an, a sneaky way to get free slave labor from Americans. Just arrest them. But anyway, uh, William H. Moore is thank you for being to. on the show. Until next time, bye bye. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. Thank you. Even though we bucked heads myself and uh, William H. Morrow III. We bucked heads uh, this week. Thank you, for, nevertheless, for doing the show with me. Uh, uh, based on the fact that William Morrow's father was a, a big-time executive with IBM and taught him everything he knows, uh, Billy Morrow is still uh, is showed his corporatist uh, beliefs this week and was uh, just a little too pro-corporatist and uh, when I mentioned 9-11 uh, being an inside job he went into denial like Barbara Walters did with Jesse Ventura he, you know he just can't and Piers Morgan he just Piers Morgan he just can't seem to accept the fact that corporations with the uh, the government can uh, be plotting against us in such a way and be that evil. America can't do bad things. Yeah, we're he, an exceptional country. He can't. Yeah, he can't. He, he can't accept the fact that corporations suck and and that the government lies. And you know, he's like uh, and that. War is a racket. But but when I explain to him what they're doing then he was on my side but he keeps on his mind always reverts back to the, the corporate way of thinking that he learned from his father you know what I mean it's like 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 that guy Taz that we used to have when we were on Alternacast you know what I mean it's like it's not in your best interest so why support that side of the fence look Totally illogical. The Koch brothers have been exposed. They're out there. They right. don't give a damn anymore. They know what they're doing. We know what they're doing. Yep. And yet, the people still support the what they're doing. So you see the Supreme Court, Citizens United, and the McCutcheon cases. Let the corporations spend as much as they want to buy our government. Well, it's okay. They have the go ahead, they have the green light now, you know, and uh, it's just, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. It's like the proof is in the pudding. You just use common sense, but people are. I'm not that way, but some people are just very easily brainwashed. They, they can't uh, go back in time and say, you know what? Those history books I had in school did not tell me everything. They were full of lies. Hmm. Some people are like, oh, whatever I was taught as I was growing up, I, have, I, I will always believe that. I, I will always accept that because that's how I, I was raised. But I'm not that way. I'm a completely independent, free thinker. I'm willing to accept the fact that I was taught lies. You know, and, uh, you know, the corporations are, 
well, they, they've always been uh, demonically uh, influenced because they just carry, they just care about the bottom line. And that's that, you know, and they're you know, too big. Billy, Billy. Too big to fail. Billy blamed unions. I knew he was going to do it. He blamed unions. He blamed, uh, don't blame the unions for wanting a living wage to uh -huh. survive on. And eight hours a day and all the other things they fought for. No child labor, etc. Et yeah. Et what did he blame unions for? Uh, the, the reason why uh, corporations have to outsource American jobs. They don't have to. They, he says they want too much. They don't have to. They do. To increase the profit margin. They're already making profits. Yeah. Before they outsource. When they outsource, they increase the profit margin at the expense of wages. Right, that's why they should be tariffed. That's what it's all about. You bring it back in, yeah. There's nothing to do with unions. Yeah, well, that's a very wanting too it's much a, money. It's a very right-wing thing to say to blame unions. Yes, and uh, because they don't like my, my, unions. My, my uncle Phil, he blamed unions. That <laughs> they all they all blame unions. And if it, but if it wasn't for the unions, we will be uh, just short of slave labor for these corporations. It's actually not unions that they blame. They blame collectivism. That is when a bunch of people get together to get something done. Well, like the Tea Party? Well, they like that in their areas. Right. But they don't like it in areas that they don't like. But it's collectivism is the problem with them. For Collectivism for progression, progressiveness. They don't like that. No, they want they want regressiveness so they can make more money with the worker, with the uh, with the mainstream. Yeah, so the boss keeps more profit. It's a it's an old fashioned ancient human defect called greed. It's only since the seventies. It never was before. Yeah. So you gotta understand that something happened. Okay? Something occurred back then to allow all this all. And when Mr. Reagan came in, remember James Carter began the deregulation. Really? And Mr. Reagan really carried it on. Jimmy Carter, a Democrat, started deregulation. Interesting. A Democrat. A corporatist. A corporatist. Okay. Two sides of the same coin, two party system. That's correct. You That's know, correct. people have to get that through their head about the two party system. Mm -hmm. Not know. only the two party system. I think I'm going to read something here uh, yeah. about this, but uh, from another point of view, I think from the Tea Party point of view. But the problem is not the government, as Reagan said, the people running it. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, I want to induct one more uh, entity, wicked entity, into the Chisler's Hall of Shame, and that is CEO Mr. Mackey of Whole Foods, Whole Foods, from Texas, the company has been cheating people, uh, and uh, not only uh, with the phony uh, USDA uh, certified uh, organic label <laughs> and tainted foods from China, bogus organic USDA food from China, 
but they have been uh, cheating people as far as the uh, astronomical prices and you said they have not weights and measures weights and measures they got in trouble with they have not they are including the weight of the packaging with yep. the food when you weigh something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like from the salad bar or uh, I, I mentioned peanut butter from the peanut butter machine whatever you're paying they're making you pay per pound for the uh, plastic deli cup or whatever mm -hmm. and, and their prices are exorbitant exorbitant price gouging high you know, I think so somebody mentioned something to the effect of shame on you like fifteen dollars for some kind of salad or something well the, what the hell the salad was like last time I was in Whole Foods it was like eight or nine dollars a pound what? something of, to that effect and what happens is I learned this the hard way if you put you know you walk around and you select what you like but as soon as you start putting items from the salad bar that are soaking in olive oil you're adding a substantial amount of weight to your salad and before you know it you're paying more money for your whole food salad than you would pay at a buffet for lunch eating top-notch food if I go to the flaming grill buffet for lunch I'm paying seven dollars and thirty nine cents all you can eat for top-of-the-line food okay with the whole foods salad it ends up being a lot more because it's heavy it's a stuff weighs you know anything that's uh, has a sauce in it or uh, uh, oil an oil which includes uh, mayonnaise or water right exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. any anything that is fatty acid fat related has weight to it and it gets heavy very quickly and so when you weigh that out you're gonna get hammered with the price mm. So, he's a, well, he he's he has a permanent fixture in the Chisler's Hall of Shame a long time ago, Mr. Mackey of Whole Foods. So shame, shame on you. Anyway, let us go back to the show. <clears throat> and um, and uh, as you can see from at the very beginning of the show. Uh, William H. Morrow the third has a very nice uh, he did a very nice video greeting to introduce myself and the Reverend Dr. Bill so good job I don't always agree with columnist George Will as at times it is often hard to figure out what he is writing but his column was right on. All one needs to do is to read the first four paragraphs. And any level-headed thinking taxpayer should agree. The column could have gone on for pages. President Obama has complete disdain for the taxpayer and U.S. citizens in general. He lives the princely life he claims to rail against. He and the liberal left flaunt in the face of taxpayers' programs and policies that are poorly thought out and pathetically implemented, such as Obamacare. Right. And they thumb their noses at us and say, not my problem. They have theirs. That's a two-party system. They have theirs, and they don't care if you need yours or not. His campaign promised to get us out of that ill-fated President George W. Bush fiasco called the Iraqi War 
resulted in another poorly thought out fiasco, which we appear to have no problem getting back into. Hey, they had, the Democrats had full control of Washington when Obama first got in. They could have done a lot of things in those two years. His fiscal policies, his welfare state mindset, and his energy policies are all a shambles for non-existence. It's not the welfare state, it's the fact that the, the, the wealthy are not paying taxes. It's a revenue problem. He claims the Republicans are an obstacle, yet fails to compromise as demonstrated by his go-it-alone policy. Like many, I count the days left before King Obama vacates office. No compromising with Republicans. I don't care what, what this boob says. No compromising. It will be a great day for America when this man is gone. A great day for for America, yeah, if, if this man is gone and you have a Republican in there that makes the poor starve to death? Unfortunately, the damage he has done will take years to reverse. Oh, wait a minute now. The damage he has done? Yeah. Um, the damage George W. Bush did. Did they allow Obama years to fix it? No, they blamed him right away for it all. He inherited G.W. Bush's mess. What's the name of this jerk-off? This was the Charlie Poynton. Charlie Poynton has a point on top of his head. <laughs> it's great the way I, I just come up with these quick jokes, isn't it? Now here's an, another take on the same letter or column. Columnist George Will's pompous harangue about President Obama and his use of executive power never addresses the main reason why this president has been forced into the aggressive use of this privilege. <laughs> what did I say before? G.W. used it many more times than Obama. Namely, the uh. absolute refusal <gasps> of the Republican House to consider any conversation, much less compromise with this president. Remember what Mitch McConnell said. Turtle face? What do you say? We want to make Obama a one-term president. Well, they flunked at that. But, yeah, but, uh, but that, that meant that they weren't going to work with him at all. But, Period. Uh, 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 yeah, so why are Democrats so hung up on this compromising? This bipartisanship hippie. Yeah, they want to get something done. That's Barney right. the dinosaur. You love me and, and I, I love, love you. you. I love you and whoopty, you. Whoopty, 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 you know, I mean, give me a break. They want to get something done. Nothing gets done anyway. That's what happens. Because you need two to dance and the tango. If, yeah, and then if you're compromising with the devil, what you do get done obviously turns out to be a big negative. What the devil wants. Yeah. Because the devil won't compromise. It'll make you think you're compromising. Perhaps if Republicans would come to the table regarding such pressing issues as immigration, health care, welfare, education, and drug policy, this president would not be forced into using his executive power so widely. Look to the Scandinavian countries as a role model. Compromise 
not lawsuits, is what we, the people, expect of our legislature. No! No! Not this we, the people. No compromise. We want a progressive government. Regardless of whether you agree or disagree with President George W. Bush's decision to go into Iraq, keep in mind that he had the backing of almost every Democrat in Congress, including Senators Hillary Clinton and John Kerry. But what they claim was in Iraq was not there. Uh, I think I think America was behind him in terms of let's go after Al Qaeda and and find Al Qaeda was never in Iraq and find o Osama bin Laden, but they weren't were not in Iraq and neither Osama bin Laden was in Afghanistan. That's right, and neither you know, or, or maybe in, or, in, well Pakistan eventually. That's where he ended up. Right, uh, but uh, George Bush let him go from Tora Bora. And there was no, there was no weapons of mass destruction in in Iraq, and uh, oh, I bucked heads with Billy Moore about that too. He says, uh, "Oh, don't be too sure." I hear they're still hidden. I go, "Where, Billy? Where, where are they hidden?" So, so now he was defending Bush. I think I'm going to stick to non-political topics with Billy Moore. When Bush left office, he left a stable. Yeah. Though fragile, new government there. Free elections were held for the first time. This was due to Bush's surge being enormously successful. President Obama's responsibility upon taking over was to leave a presence behind to safeguard and assist the new government in developing. Uh, sir, Maliki and the Bush administration signed a no lead behind decree. They didn't want no soldiers left behind. George Bush did it, not Obama. Yeah, and how come they didn't close Guantanamo Bay? Like, uh, wasn't that one of the campaign promises? Yeah, well, that's still working. He's still working on that one. Working on it? Yeah. You just do it. <laughs> yeah, but what are you going to do with the people? That's the problem. Send them to another uh, facility. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You've got to try them. And they have no evidence on a lot of them. That's what the problem is. They don't have evidence, and why are they holding them? Bingo! We asked that of the George Bush administration. If you don't get evidence on him, why are you holding him? A lot of them were... Uh, the George Bush administration paid people to squeal on other people and then we threw them in Guantanamo. So, you know. Oh, you mean like uh, the patriotic... <gasps> I saw him. He did this, that, and the other thing. Oh, oh, oh he's a bad guy. He's a terrorist. Yeah, but it's their All right, word. Lock that it's, sucker it's, it's their word against the victim's word. It's yeah, like, but the victim has no power. you got to have evidence. got no power. Where the hell is the power? If you don't have law on your side, you have no power. So somebody could finger you yeah. without evidence and you can end up in Guantanamo. Yeah. What about in America today? The, what was it that just signed the other day? The Monsanto Protection Act? You know, uh... Well, what if you want to finger them now? Or blow the whistle on them? You know, uh... uh one of my members was uh, posted something uh, extremely complimentary for 
Barack Obama. You know, I, I do agree that he did inherit the mess from G.W. Bush. Thank you. But I asked the question to all these uh, big fans of the Democratic Party. I said, why, why did Obama sign the Monsanto Protection Act? That was a very bad move. It is pro-corporation and anti-people. Yeah. And they agreed with me. Yeah, well, why did he sign it? But he did. Well, why does it take? Why did it take me to bring it up? They're all get, they're all giving him accolades left and right. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I mean, think and in, be an independent free Remember thinker. Remember one think. thing that politicians are. Number one, they are salesmen. Okay. What are they selling? They're selling themselves. Well, look at a campaign. Is it, is it how much how much different is a campaign from a retail commercial? No. It's a commercial. Mm -hmm. They have TV ads. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. They make they make claims. They make accusations. And lie. And they lie. They lie. And they're allowed to do it. An infomercial has is predominantly. Lies. What does it say at the end, which uh, which gives you a false sense of security? Guaranteed. You owe your money back. Yeah, but there's there's always a little limited warranty. It's always you're all right. You're you you're under warranty, but there's disclaimer. There's it's a limited warranty. So it's like um, if it's if it breaks because of your carelessness and neglect, like if you allow your circus elephant to sit on it, Ew. it's no longer under warranty. <laughs> You're an elephant trainer. You know, I mean, look, I, I've, I've had, I've been victimized and uh, made bad decisions with infomercial products, and ah. I've, I've gotten suckered. I admit, you know, and uh, uh, very rarely does an infomercial product uh, do what they claim it does. Uh, uh, very, very rarely. Uh, from what I hear, the ninja is just fabulous. But then again, the ninja is now found in department stores. And that started off as an infomercial, but it happens to be a high quality product. You know, so President Obama's responsibility upon taking over was to leave a presence behind to safeguard and assist the new government developing. He abdicated that responsibility. And as I said before, he didn't have that responsibility because of the decree that was signed by the Bush administration right. and Maliki. Okay? The results of that failure are that Iraq is in serious danger of becoming a terrorist state. Think of the repercussions of that. There are too many to list here. But put the blame where it belongs. On the incompetence of the Obama administration. Another place where there's no blame for Mr. Obama. Okay? Infants who are exposed to household bacteria, dander, and allergens during the first year of life are less likely to develop allergies and asthma. Research at John Hopkins Children's Center suggests some 7 million American children are affected by asthma. A 
condition that ends up costing the nation $56 billion each year. Previous studies found that farm kids have lower allergy and asthma rates because they are regularly exposed to microorganisms in the soil. However, other studies have found that inner city kids have increased asthma risks, perhaps because of exposure to roach and mouse allergens. That study was published in the journal Allergy and Clinical Immunology. Okay. People with low vitamin D blood levels are more likely to die prematurely than those with normal levels, according to a new study. Researchers pulled data from 32 studies and found that people with a blood level below 9 nanograms per millimeter had almost double the risk of premature death compared with those with levels of 50 or higher. Levels above 50 conferred no extra benefits. The study was published online in the American Journal of Public Health. Well, an, an allergy is, is definitely a part of, uh, of having a suppressed immune system. Uh, there are natural things one can take, uh, like what I do. I, I, I take high amounts of vitamin C, and I also take a uh, homeopathic allergy formula that the Reverend Dr. Bill gave me that works quite effectively and quickly. Put it under your tongues, one tablet, as needed, and it works. I haven't touched uh, allergy medication in quite some time now. Little change of scenery here. Okay. I fell in love with a boy when I was 12. It's about to be a female talking. Deeply in love. Yeah, come on, deeply in love, my ass. At Twelve. We met at our county fair. Oh God. We grew up together. Uh, have remained friends for thirty years. Now they're old. He married. Had children. As did I. I am now divorced, but he is still married. Uh, uh, you know what? Tell her not to be a homewrecker. Recently, our friendship has grown into something more. Uh-oh. Something more? He wants our relationship to continue. Uh. But. He's afraid to leave his wife because of the kids. Oh, brother. She's a homewrecker. They have been together for 20 years. What do I do? Leave the poor man and his wife alone. He's the love of my life. Find another love of your life. Any time that I have with him is better than none. No, she's, she's, she's. It's not that I don't know I deserve better. But he is.
she's unhappy. Why does she deserve the best? So everybody thinks they deserve a better. And I am miserable without him. Then, you know, what be, do I do? Be miserable. What do what I do? I do? Try to meet somebody else. Leave the marriage, the married man alone. Answer. Think, think of his family. Answer. From dear Abby. Of the, the new Abby. What you do depends upon your strength of character and what you want out of life. If you want to spend the foreseeable future as this man's side dish, then continue as you have been. A prisoner of passion. That's right. With not much common sense. That's right. If you would like to have a stable life and find a man who will make you number uno in his life, then you will have to call a halt to this affair and go through a period of withdrawal. The same as people have to do with any addiction. Yes, an addiction. It may not be pleasant, but that's what I recommend. Addiction, obsession. Doesn't uh, this new Dear Abby ever, ever tell people, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> no, she, she does what, a lot of telling what, them to go to a... Uh, what the hell's the matter with you? To go to a, uh, you know, a marriage counselor and everything. I have, a, I have an Uncle George that sounds... Uh, he looks a lot like Mr. Magoo and he, and he sounds <laughs> like, like Froggy from Courageous Cat in Minimum. What the hell's the matter with you? Get the hell out yeah, of here. A little WC feels too. What the hell's the matter with you? What are you doing that for? Yeah, what are you doing that for? With a little yelling involved there, that looked like that uh, that uh, video on Facebook there with what? Bob Backlund and his uh, in-house gym. Oh, with the, the gym in a and box. The guy that was yelling at him, I don't know, was his father or what? No, that was him. He was playing him. Oh, he was playing himself again. Yeah, it was like. It ain't gonna work. It was. Yeah, it was. It was a split screen. It was. That was him. <laughs> His home gym was a box that you step up and step down. Yeah, off. that he wants like a hundred bucks for. Oh my it's God. a plywood or I don't know what kind of wood it is, but it's, it's a box that has hinges. It folds flat. Oh my. God. And. Uh, uh, you could bring it with you on a suitcase. He he wanted something portable, you know, for travel, and uh, he, he, that he can bring to a hotel room. And it has a wheel, has an ab wheel, which I happen to use. I don't do the step up, but I do. I do the wheel, and it's very very effective. Do not underestimate its simplicity. Believe me. All right. Yeah, that was last Bob. one. He had the red bow tie. Yeah, which you should wear. Scientists have made big progress on a bionic pancreas. Not a bionic elbow, like Dusty Rhodes. A bionic pancreas to free some people with diabetes from the daily ordeal of managing their disease. Or pancreatic cancer victims. A wearable experimental device passed a real world test, constantly monitoring blood sugar and automatically giving insulin or a sugar boosting drug as needed, doctors said on Sunday. I hear in Europe they have used pig organs uh, in humans for transplanting. But those pig organs are very similar to human organs. Why don't they put a pig's pancreas in them? Unless he's Jewish, then it wouldn't be kosher. The device of improved blood sugar control more than...
standard monitor and insulin pumps did when tested five days on 20 adults and 32 teens. Unlike other artificial pancreases, in development that just correct high blood sugar, this one also can fix low sugar levels, mimicking what a natural pancreas does. The device was developed at Massachusetts General Hospital and Boston University. Results were featured Sunday at an American Diabetes Association conference in San Francisco. I'm very excited about it, said Dr. B2 Hatapoglu, <laughs> an endocrinologist wow. at Cleveland Clinic, who had no role in the work. Many patients have been frustrated, waiting for a cure. So this is a really great new horizon for them. The bionic pancreas is for type 1 diabetes, the kind often found during childhood. About 5% of the 26 million Americans with diabetes have this type and cannot make insulin to turn food into energy. Well, why don't they eat properly and maybe they wouldn't drive their pancreas crazy. They don't have the beta cells to produce the insulin. Oh, they're born with this. They gain it afterwards, or they're born with it, whatever. Kids get it. Child onset diabetes, type 1 or type 2? Yes. Type 2 is more dietary connected. That's correct. Sugar build usually in type 2, <clears throat> like 80% or more, don't even need insulin. Okay, it's not an insulin problem yeah. for them. Most of them, 80%, are overweight. That's obvious. Ameri obesity in America? Sure. Just look at the food. Look at the American food industry. Look at the supermarket. Sugar builds up in the blood, raising the risk for heart disease and many other problems like eye problems, nerve problems. Cancer loves sugar. Cancer cells, bacteria and viruses. These people must check their blood and inject insulin several times a day or get it through a pocket-sized pump with a tube that goes under the skin. Really? I know a young lady with that. This would lift that burden off their shoulders. It has three parts. Two cell phone sized pumps for insulin and sugar raising glucagon and an iPhone wired to a continuous glucose monitor. Oh. What are you going to do? Carry these around with you all day long? Don't these people take... Um, what, you need a fanny pack? Don't these people take a chromium polynicotinate, zinc, vanadium, especially the chromium, don't they take that supplement? Well, that's not going to help them with type 1. We're we need, talking about making insulin. We need to find out what is wrong Artificial with pancreas. What is wrong with their original pancreas? They don't have the beta cells. But they don't know why they don't have the beta cells. Probably different in different individuals. Who know. Okay. They some call it an autoimmune. Auto wow. Autoimmune. Okay. Yeah. Which is bad. Yeah. It's hard to logical to begin with the autoimmune autoimmune disease it doesn't make sense 
Your immune system is oh, attacking. Oh boy, here we go. Itself. Look at this. What? Three small needles go under the skin. Well, diabetic needles are they're, they're small. They hit it. They hit. That's not diabetic new needles. This is from the machines. Oh. oh. Usually in the belly. connect patients to the components which can be kept in a fanny pack or a pocket. You know, that's how bodybuilders inject growth hormone into your, with diabetic needles in the belly. Lovely. Patients still have to prick their fingers to test blood sugar twice a day and make sure the monitor is accurate. But the system takes care of giving insulin or glucagon as needed. Christina Herndon said her 13-year-old son Christopher loved it when he tried it for his study loved and it. felt pretty badly giving it back. What a, what a weird kid. What a strange... Christopher has to check his blood sugar Jeez. eight to ten times a day. He's a masochist. And his family has to watch him closely in case it dips too low Ugh. while he sleeps. Which can cause seizures or death. Yeah. It's a disease that I think people think is not a big deal, but it's tough. It's a very big deal. It's hard on a family. Damn right. Next steps. A study starts today in 40 adults who will use the device for 11 days. By fall, researchers hope to have a next-generation version combining all three components into one device to be tested in studies next year aimed at winning Food and Drug Administration approval. Oh, lovely, the FDA. My goal is to have this device, speaking of the FDA, in this issue of the newsletter censored. Oh, just hot off the pancake riddle, folks. The new issue is out. How to defeat a conservative will be dealing with Wilhelm Reich and how the nasty, disgusting, conservative FDA stopped interrupted his work and burned his books six times. I think they mistreated Wilhelm Reich a lot more than Nikola Tesla. It sounds like they really were on a witch hunt with uh, Wilhelm Reich. Yes, they were. No, te well, Tesla, Tesla was, was too valuable and too important to to, to hassle, they just, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, Tesla, don't forget, although it didn't do him much good, he was hobnobbing with some big boys yeah. at the time. And they confiscated his work when he died alone in a hotel room, which was a shame. Yeah, well, that he who has it now? We don't know. Uh, the classified information. They have it. Top secret. But anyway, it's yeah. in there. and uh, You never thought that the United States was like, like Nazi Germany. Well, it was and is. So, as long as they can get away with it, they will. Plutocratic oligarch. Well, you could be, uh, you could be sure 
if uh, a pharmaceutical uh, substance is involved with this this diabetic uh, machine that, that the FDA will give it approval. Oh, yeah. As long as it's going to make some money for some private firm. Exactly. My goal is to have this device done by the time my kid, who has type 1 diabetes, goes to college. In about three years, said Ed Damiano, a biomedical engineer at Boston University, to San Diego based companies Dexcom and Tandem Diabetes Care Incorporated made components of the version tested in the current study. Boston University and Massachusetts General own or have patents pending on the system. Mm -hmm. You know damn well that some private firms are going to get those patents. Oh, yeah. May I say the internet Medtronic, Johnson and & Johnson, and several other companies are also working on artificial pancreas devices. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. And before we say so long for this week, um, I just want to tell you... Happy Trails? I want, no. I want Happy trails to you. Now I want to tell you about um, a very amusing article that you will see on the uh, Facebook group. Uh, it is an article with photos showing China's all new uh, semen automatic semen extracting machine in in the clinic, and it, and it, and it has like. Uh, latex or silicone like piston like you know like a tube with a hole in it with with you know little, little doohickeys in there and it goes in and out like this because it goes, where is it extracting <laughs> semen from well hopefully it was out in the hallway hopefully it's going to be placed in a private location I, I mean I don't know about the Chinese I don't know if you know what do you do? Put your cat in there or what? Yeah, you're supposed to stick your penis in there and then you turn it on and it starts going in and out. And then the uh, the, the, the semen goes into some kind of receptacle. So, you know. Like, what are you doing with the semen? It's. I they guess, don't want extra children. I think it's for, um, I guess, what, for artificial, for donations. They don't want extra children. Artificial semen. Yeah, the white. Why would they come out with this? They only had a policy of one child. Seminal machine, unless it's oh. sold for uh, masturbation purposes. Well, somebody put up a video last night on on Facebook. Well, well you'll see it on the on the group. Uh, 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 this this group is about nothing. It's there. Somebody put up a video last night on Facebook. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Public sex. Where? There was. They, this, this, this couple was in a looked like a bus station or something of that, that nature. And she was against the wall by an escalator, and he it was open in the front. She was open in the front. He was escalating. He was sticking her right there in public with everybody going by in and the, et cetera, et cetera. In the U.S. I think it was Japan or something. And he finishes up, and then they they. Button up each other and they walk away. They allow this? That's what I'm saying. Maybe, maybe, you know. They get, the clothes were on. They just undid the fronts. He pulled his fly down yeah. and, and, and lifted her skirt a little. No, she didn't have a skirt on. I don't know. I think she had pants on. And she just opened her front. 
front too, and they just, you know. In public, they had in public, yeah. they, 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 they can't sneak People into People walking by and up the escalator, down They, they the can't area. sneak into a public restroom. No, I guess not. You know. Anyway, that's that's quite enough for this week. Thank you for joining us, people. Uh, have a safe and fun-filled uh, 4th of July, uh, U.S. Independence Day, which is Friday. Uh, be safe, of course, and uh, if you're going to drink, have a designated driver, and enjoy the barbecue food. And uh, it's hot out, you know. It's typical. I think we should call it summer weather. Corporation and plutocrats Independence Day. Well, now Once they got the independence. We did now. Well, yes. Now we, the people, need independence from our own system, our own government, our own system. Mm -hmm. It's got to be changed. We system need system is. It is fine in that sense. It is the people running it right now. Yeah. They have to go bye bye. Okay? Well, because the system is totally corrupt. Then the system has to be changed, yeah. take the money out, right. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Got to take action like Iceland did to with their screwed up system. They didn't play any games. The, the bankers, the banksters, Went to jail. Well, don't forget, Canada went through this uh, fiscal meltdown with no problems whatsoever, because their banks had reserves and they were they were conducting business like old-fashioned bankers. Right. In America, we weren't. It's all about profit. Oh my God! All about profit. How embarrassing it is here in America. They're so obsessively greedy. And and. Greedy, beyond the, uh, the value of, of, of the environment and, and, the, and the planet and people, it's like everything takes a backseat to profit. Everything, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everything is, falls short of profit. Everything. That's it. Everything. They don't care if the air is polluted, if the water is polluted, if people are starving. They don't care about the climate change. Uh, animals becoming extinct, which is from, from human greed. And remember, but, which is from human greed, by the way. They don't care about their own children. But because what kind of a what world are they leaving then? There you go. The, the rich kids have to live in the same world as everyone else's kids. Bingo. But other countries have seen the light, like the, I believe the, the president of, uh, El Presidente of Bolivia is, wants to do an international, has this international program to help save the world, or help save humanity from itself. Someone put up a map of Africa. The other day on Facebook, yeah. showing how much land it would take to install uh, solar towers, solar uh, panels, and etc. To provide to provide electricity for the world. I saw that. They showed <coughs> they showed how much of the Sahara Desert would be taken up Correct. By, by the solar plants. You know, so. Solar, uh, this uh, solar towers, whatever panels, whatever towers, use, yeah. and it's only a fraction of the of entire the size of the, the Sahara Desert. Absolutely, that's all you and need. And, <coughs> and, and remembering that the Sahara oh. Desert ain't doing nothing. Just sitting there. The it's sand, sitting there. The sand is sitting there, getting blown back and forth. And it, it's, it's the Sahara Desert, man. I mean, oh my gosh. It's incredible. Stupidity. stupidity. It's such stupidity. Even the American Southwest, let's take the Mojave Desert. 
Okay. Yeah, that's probably for us so long. But this, that was for the world. This is the world. Yeah. The entire world. Because the Sahara Desert happens to be the largest desert in the world. It's all that all that used to be fertile at one time, but I mean this is electricity for the world, which proves that corruption in politics, big oil, has their dirty, oily hands in suppressing what is best for all. What is best for everyone with the Green Movement. Yeah, unfortunately. Hey, we're in the end times. 2 Timothy, forces of evil. It's with the corporate CEOs and uh, the politicians that are in bed with them. You know, so vote independent. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. This has been a Megalife 21 production.